Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hi, everyone. I'm an alcoholic. Um, my sobriety date is November 1st, 2004. And uh, I have a sponsor. He's aware that he is my sponsor. And, um, and I have the, the privilege of sponsoring um, women. And uh, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for, for having me. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I, I, do, I do have a, I'll thank the committee for having me here, but I do have a bone to pick. Um, I don't know if you, if you see the flyers around you. You see that everybody has a little topic to talk about. And uh, you can take a look at all the topics that we've been given. And, um, and everybody else has, like, God is awesome, you know, and, like, I'm recovered and doing great, you know, and then mine is, like, peculiar mental twist. You know, like, like when they were going around the committee, like, what topic should we give Emily that she can really talk about well, you know? It's like, well, she's pretty effed up, you know? So, um, so thanks for that, guys, uh, for your vote of confidence. Um, but it is true. I'm really good at talking about that. I have a lot of experience with, with mental twistedness. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know, like. Thank you for my for my road dogs coming with me. Um, so it's a nice little two-hour drive from Philly, and uh, thanks Matt for driving. Um, I don't know, man. Like I'm a little nervous now. I wasn't nervous all day, and now I have some sloppy Joe in me, and now I'm nervous. Um, I don't know. I'll start I'll start from when I was a kid. Uh, you know, because I believe that my alcoholism was present before I ever picked up a drink. I, you know, okay. I'll start with this story. I was two. And um, and I had not yet drank yet when I was two. And, um, like, my mom tells me this story. I don't remember it. But uh, I guess something happened where I didn't get, like, a cookie or a piece of cake that I really wanted badly. And, um, you know, I decided at the ripe old age of two, just had started walking maybe, like, a year before, um, that I was going to run away, you know, because of the injustices that were going on around me. And, um <laughs> And so my mom tells a story that I went to my bedroom, and uh, I got my little suitcase out. It probably was, like, pink and had, you know, fairies on it or something, Barbie. Um, and I, I loaded up my clothes. I folded them nicely, and I put them in there, and I proceeded to run away to the basement where I was going to live out my years, you know, and, um, and, and not be bothered, you know, by everybody else. And uh, I could do what I want, you know. And um, so I did that. And, uh, <clears throat> and obviously, like, when I got hungry, I, I moved back home. Um, but anyway, so the reason I tell that story is because I carried that sort of attitude into, it's like very cute to run away from home, like, because, you know, I get a cookie when I'm two. It's very cute to do that when you're two. It's not as cute when you're like 19, 20 to like have that attitude, you know, we're like, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home because you kids won't play right, you know, and, um, and unfortunately, like that is, that is the attitude that I have you know, um, before I ever drank, you know, so <clears throat> the other thing that I like to talk about is when I was, uh, when I was about five-ish, I, uh, like, my dad would take me to church every once in a while, and, um, and I'd be sitting there, and I'd be in, like, this little fantasy world, you know, in the pew, I wouldn't pay attention, because, you know, it's boring, <laughs> like Ron said, and, um, and I would sit there and draw and just sort of, you know, zone out or whatever, and then I would feel my dad nudge me, because it was, like, the children's sermon time, you know, how the, I don't know if you've ever been to that type of service, but they have a little children's sermon, and all the kids go up there, and they get their sermon, and they go to, down to Sunday school, and, like, I refused to go up to this little children's sermon, you know, for, for a couple reasons. One, uh, I did not want to get up in front of everybody, you know, that was just, that was crazy, and, uh, and two, like, I would have to go play with the other little kids, like, down in, in Sunday school, and, like, I didn't know those kids. I didn't want to know those kids, you know, and, uh, like, I was just much more content sitting there in my own little world, you know, and, um, like, punishment for me when I was growing up was, like, Emily, you go outside right now, you know, like, that was my punishment, instead of being grounded, you know, like, I was so content being by myself, you know, because the world, you guys, like, from a young age, you just didn't act right, you know, and, um, so, like, growing up, let's see, what else was going on, um, again, before I picked up a drink, I, 
I had this head that was so loud, you know, and, um, you know, that was useful sometimes, you know, having this imagination, because I did like to play with, like, by myself, not, you know, with anybody else, and so I would pretend to be like a ninja or like Indiana Jones, you know, and I would, like, run around my house, like, whipping stuff, you know, and, uh, and that was so much more fun than playing with the other kids, because sometimes they didn't want to play what I wanted to play, you know, and so again, like, all right, fine, I'll do it on my own, you know, um, so let's see. So, okay, yeah, I'm also, like, terrified of the little kids and what they think about me, you know, because, again, from a young age, like, I had this head that told me, like, something's wrong with you. Like, something's just a little off, you know, and I couldn't tell you that that was going on, like, when I was young. Um, I couldn't put that into words, but that's how I felt, you know. There was just something off. Everybody else seemed to get it, you know. I remember having the thought when I was 12, before I picked up a drink, like, everybody else got this little manual in the mail, and, like, how to live their life, how to do basic stuff, and I didn't get it, you know? And, uh, and I was pissed about that. <laughs> I had a chip on my shoulder about that, you know? And um, like everybody else just seemed to get it. There was, like, it was like everybody was in on this joke that I wasn't in on, you know? And um, they were having a really good time about it. But, um, so let's see. I had, uh, I had a couple of, of figures in my family uh, that showed me what, what alcoholism could do to a family, the, the relationships that it could destroy, the families that it could destroy, and the loneliness and the pain and the desperation that alcohol brought. Um, so that was my example of drinking. It was never like, it never looked like a good time when I was growing up. It was just sort of, it just was pain. And um, so for the longest time, I didn't drink. I didn't drink until I was 15. Um, for that reason, you know, there was just really no point to me for drinking. Um, but the thing that was going on was I was, uh, I was so painfully lonely, felt really off this whole time, right, um, growing up. I had this head that just won't shut up, you know. The only way I can describe it is, like, if this room was, like, 50 times bigger and you all started screaming at me with, like, ideas on how to live my life and what people were thinking, like, that's what it sounds like in my head, you know. So I'm walking around like that, and, uh, you know, I would actually, like, cut out friends that started drinking, you know, and I'd be like, oh, that's so stupid, you know, like, I've seen the Dare film strips, you know, like, and I've seen what it, what it well, I've seen what it does, you know, I don't want to be shooting heroin in my eyeball, you know, like, I don't want to do that, and that's what's going to happen if I take a toke off that joint, you know, and, uh, like, just real, like, a total snob about it. And I was into sports, you know. Like, I, I was just, I was on the honor roll. Like, things were looking good on the outside, you know. But, again, I have this, like, thing in me that's just off, you know. So I'm 15, and uh, all, the, all these convictions that I was never going to drink, that I was, like, this good girl, that I was on the honor roll, and blah, blah, blah. Like, something happened where it was just suddenly my idea, hey, why don't we get, you know, I was on, we were on the bus. I was on the softball team. I was like, hey, we just lost this big game, the season's over, why don't we get drunk, you know? And uh, so we got, like, what 15-year-olds get. We got, like, the Coors Light, you know, from the basement, you know, and, uh, like, Zimas, you know. And, uh, <laughs> like, which, by the way, this is just my opinion. It isn't in the big book. Um, if the thought, okay, you might be an alcoholic if the, uh, the thought of a wine cooler makes you angry. You know, like, like you're an alcoholic, you know, because um, to this day, I'm like, why, you know, but, uh, side note, um, so we got our Zimas, and we got our Coors Light, and we went out to this field, because I grew up in Kutztown, and that's where you drank, um, you drank in fields and woods, and, uh, and we proceeded to, uh, we proceeded to get drunk, and, um, actually, that's a lie. We didn't proceed to get drunk. I proceeded to get drunk. They were out to, like, play cards and enjoy each other's company and, like, socialize and all that stuff. And I, like, was not interested. And, I mean, I thought that's – like, I didn't go there with the intention, like, hey, I'm going to get blitzed and have everybody get pissed off at me tonight, you know? <laughs> like, I really want a couple of my friends, you know, to get annoyed because they have to take care of me and carry me to the bathroom, you know? Like, that wasn't my intention. Like, it was like, hey, I'm going to hang out with these people. It's going to be cool, um, whatever, you know? But because I have this thing um, also in me where uh, I have one or two of those Coors Lights or those Zimas, as delicious as they are, and, um, and, like, I keep going, you know? I keep drinking, 
no matter what. And, uh, you know, I was, I was proud, you know, to be the only one that got cut off that night, you know. And uh, I remember, like, a couple things happened for me, right? So I have this fear and I have this anxiety growing up. And, uh, and I get a couple of those drinks in me, man, and, like, that fell away. You know, you guys weren't screaming as loud. Um, I wasn't as afraid. And, uh, and this magic happened for me, like a lot of people describe. You know, that happened. And, uh, and when you have a head like mine and when you have the, the awful feelings that are going on inside of you, of course you're going to drink. You know, if something takes that away, why wouldn't you drink? You'd be crazy not to, you know. And, um, and so I did, you know, without even thinking about it. And the problem is, is that, you know, I'll have those one or two, that buzz, that good, get that good buzz on, and I get that, in that right spot where I feel a little bit okay about being me. And, uh, and then the, uh, the phenomenon of craving kicks in and I take it past that. You know, that's where the problem kicked in. And um, so I get drunk and I remember just like, you know, a couple, a couple things stand out. One was I, was I was laying on the grass, again we were outside, and uh, the whole world is spinning, I'm a little bit nauseous. And uh, at this point, I'm having, like, I need to literally be sort of, like, pun, pop, like uh, put over somebody's shoulder to get to the bathroom. And I'm laying there, and I'm like, man, like, this, I want to feel like this for the rest of my life, you know? This feels great, you know? Um, and then the other thing uh, that I remember was, like, there were some girls that I'd grown up with that I didn't particularly like. Like, we just, because we ran in the same circles, like, whatever, they were there, and we socialized. But I didn't really like them. And, uh, and that night, man, like, I was throwing my arm around, and I was like, hey, man, why don't we hang out more, you know? And, like, like all of a sudden, you guys were great, you know? The world was just, like, amazing, and I wanted to be a part of it all of a sudden, you know? And, um, and so no matter who you are, and that, I mean, that carried through. Like, I was, I was hanging with some characters by the end, but, like, they were awesome, you know? Um, because alcohol does that for me. It, it forms this connection between me and the rest of the world that's just not there when I'm sober. It's just not. Like, I'm just a part, that, that anxious apartness, you know. And, um, and I'm so painfully aware of it when I'm sober, you know. And that alcohol, man, it, like, just gave me the sensation that I was, I was a part of life at last, you know. Um, now, I didn't, you know, like the D.A.R.E. film strip say, after I drank and got drunk the first time, I did not, you know, the next night start shooting heroin in my eyeball. I didn't do that. Um, but I did put it in the back of my mind that uh, – that this is the way that alcohol made me feel, you know. So every chance that I got, I got wasted, you know. Um, there was never like a, I'm going to hang out with my friends tonight, I'm going to have one or two, and we're going to just like play games, watch movies, you know. It was just like the people were incidental, you know. And it was, the first question was like, is there going to be booze at, you know, that's it. Um, about a year after I started drinking, maybe a little bit more than that, um, I was drinking every day. Uh, my senior year in high school, I was I was getting wasted uh, before I was even walking into school. Um, because at that point, it was like, why not? You know, it was still fun, you know. Um, drinking always, it progressed for me, like fun, fun with problems and then just problems. You know, and at that point, it was still fun. It helped me show up to life, you know. I, I loved it. Um, I, I, mean, I think I did better on tests, honestly, um, when I was screwed up because I was relaxed and I didn't care, you know. Like, I don't know. So I would, I would go, and, and I would just I would feel okay about being where I was. And um, my senior year was interesting because I, I had gone to the same school from kindergarten up until three weeks into my senior year. And the reason why I transferred was because I decided that no one, uh, no one liked me anymore. Like, I, I, I came up with this on my own. <laughs> um, something had happened where, uh, like, I, I wasn't on the softball team anymore, and – you know, all my friends, like, just, I just, I literally convinced myself that nobody liked me. I, I'd grown up with these people, you know, and talk about alcoholism being a disease of perception. I, I convinced myself, you know, that I, I had no real friends, you know. And, um, and what's crazy is that, you know, after my friends at school found out that I was transferring, they, like, all got together and wrote this note and, like, gave it to my mom. And they were like, give this to Emily. And it was just like, where are you going? Why are you leaving? You know, we want you to stay, Why, you know. And they were so confused. And I remember, like, reading that letter and, like, tossing and being like, they're lying. You know, like, that's the way that my head thought, you know. I, I just convinced <laughs> myself of anything. And I, I had this awful, awful team of lawyers in my head, <laughs> like, convincing me of lies. It's amazing, you know. Um, so, so I transferred, 
And, uh, and the other thing that happened before I transferred was that I had a panic attack in school. It was one of the few days that I didn't get, um, like, messed up in the morning, right? Um, and I remember being in the nurse's office, and I was having a panic attack, freaking out. And they kept asking me, Emily, do you, did you do drugs this morning? Are you on acid? Like, what is wrong with you, you know? And I'm like, no, this is the one day that I'm sober, you know? And this is how I feel, you know? Um, like, that's what sobriety did for me. That's how it made me feel, you know? Um, and uh, so I go to the hospital. They try to figure out what the hell's wrong with me. And it was just, it was just straight up anxiety from being sober. You know, that's what it was. And um, so, so, yeah, so I leave that school. I'm like, I'm in and out of, like, therapists and psychiatrists at this point. I mean, you know, if you hadn't picked up on that, <laughs> um, I should have been if I wasn't. And, uh, you know, I see these people, and I would just, I mean, I would lie because they'd be like, Emily, you really shouldn't drink when you're on this type of medication. <laughs> and I was like, huh, you're right. You know, so then I would just lie and tell them that I wasn't drinking on top of this medication, you know. <laughs> and uh, I learned really early on. So, so let's see. So another couple of things that, I, that my brilliant and clever team of lawyers in my head came up with was that, like, okay, as I'm growing up, I'm like, you know, once I get my braces off, like, I'm going to be hot. You know, <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm going to have it made, you know, like, this is going to be great. And then I got my braces off, and things were the same. And it's like, and I was like, man, you know, when I start wearing contacts and not geeky glasses, like, things are going to be great, you know. And I got contacts, and everything was the same. Um, and, like, I, I – I'll, I'll, I'm going to jump for a second. Um, before before I speak, this is again, this is this is this is my ego as it stands today. Every time I, I have to speak somewhere, it, it doesn't matter where it is. It could be at a at a detox, it, then everybody's sleeping. You know, like it doesn't matter. I have the same thought. I have the same thought. Like I'm like, you know, what's going to happen is I'm going to go in there and uh, and I'm going to tell my story, and people are going to be laughing. They're going to be crying. They're going to be passing tissue boxes around. And uh, everybody's going to just be so goddamn moved, you know, by my story. Because um, they've heard so many. And, like, they're awesome, right? And, um, and then at the end, when I'm done, instead of, instead of, you know, the normal clap and I sit down, everybody's going to stand up cheering, you know. And they're going to carry me out on their shoulders, you know. Like, this is how I think, right? And thank God, like, I can just laugh about that today. But, like, the truth is, is, like, I'm not up here to impress you. I'm not up here to move you. You know, I'm up here to tell my story, you know. And it's not a particularly outside Im impressive one, you know. Um, but anyway, so that's a side note. Um, so if anybody else thinks like that, you're not alone. Um, and I know you do. Uh, so, because I'm not unique, you know. But, um, but anyway, so... So let's see. So it wasn't, like, my drinking on the outside wasn't particularly impressive, you know. Like, I wasn't in trouble. I stayed on the honor roll, you know. But um, but there was something going on uh, where, like, just that feeling again, it was just there, you know. And um, so I think getting my braces off and, like, oh, some people, like, move to other countries and get married to, like, get that feeling, like, this will fix me, this will fix me. You know, me, I was a little bit more, you know, modest. But um, But the one thing that I thought of was, well, when I go to school, when I go to college, then I'm going to be amongst my intellectual peers, you know, because one of the things that I convinced myself of was the reason that I felt so different from all of you is that I was a genius, you know. Like, I, I am a genius, and that's why people, they just aren't up to where I'm at, you know, and, uh, and that's why I can't really talk to them, and, um, and it just it makes sense, you know. Um, so once I'm in college, I'll be around all these people that get me, you know, and, uh, and yeah, so, so that was one of the things that was going to fix me, and uh, I go to school, and, uh, like, I don't know if you guys have this, but I have this, like, radar where, where um, I can go into a room filled with people, and I will somehow sniff out the people that think and drink like I do, you know, and, uh, and I did that, man, like, within, a, within the first night. You know, I met I met the uh, the heroin addicts <laughs> and the people that like to uh, to do coke in back of the dorm. You know what I mean? Like I sniffed them out before I even had a conversation with them. I just knew, you know. So um, so I really thought like I had arrived. I finally found my people who like to do what I like to do. You know, and uh, 
you know, my first weekend, I was so excited about going to school, not because, you know, the, the intellectual pursuits and that I'm, you know, finally a grown-up and all this exciting stuff. It was because I had, I had a party to go to each night, you know, the first uh, weekend that I was there. Like, how amazing is that, right? Um, and that's what I looked forward to, and I got wasted that entire weekend. And, uh, and I can tell you, and this probably isn't going to surprise you, I was, in, uh, I was at school for not even a month, and I was in arm and leg restraints at Temple University Hospital. And because um, that's how I drink, you know, <laughs> like that's just how I drink. And uh, and I don't know how I got there. Like at some point, I I stopped eating. I only drank vodka, and uh, and I was taking as many pills as I possibly could, you know. Um, some were prescribed, some weren't. And um, and like that was just that was just what I did, you know. I, I was like all of a sudden I had all this freedom and all this 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 book money, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and then I spent it on books and uh, sold them, but um, no, I, you know, and I ended up there, and uh, I remember being there, and like, they had me in the, uh, I, I couldn't understand why they restrained me, I was just like kicking and punching things, you know, and I, oh god, and I told, I would tell that story after I got out, and they'd be like, that's awful, they, they strapped you, and I was like, yeah, you know, but really, like, I was kicking and punching things, you know, so of course they did. And, uh, and, again, it was, like, it was the same question to Emily, you know, like, I'm strapped there. And they're, like, Emily, do you want something to come down? I'm, like, what do you think, you know? And uh, so, like, they shot me up, you know, and, uh, and I was happy and I calmed down. But uh, it was the same questions. Emily, did you, have you done any drugs today? Are you on LSD? Are you pregnant? I'm, like, no. Um, but, uh, but, but the thing that was different this time was the answer to that. Um, instead of about a year before, almost to the day, um, when I was in the hospital before I was sober, this time I was wasted and I was in the hospital. So something happened in that year time where alcohol was no longer taking away that feeling, you know. And, uh, and a year later I was wasted and I had that same feeling of panic, you know. So something happened um, where it just, it just wasn't doing the trick anymore, you know. And Bill talks about it. I've been reading a lot of Bill's story and Bill talks about it like, you know, when the stock market crashes. And, uh, and he's like, he gets that resolve back. You know, he goes, he's like, there's, there's men committing suicide. They're all ruined. And, uh, and he, like, laughs at them. He's like, I'm just going to go get drunk. Tomorrow's another day, you know. And then not, like, two pages later, the, the, the market crashes again. And this time he's like, should I kill myself, you know. And then something happens a couple pages later where he's like, now he's seriously considering suicide. You know, something's not working anymore. And, um. And that was the same progression for me. Like, I would, I would drink, and I'd be like, okay, I can face the world. I can be around you guys, you know. And then uh, somewhere along the line, it was just I was drinking to be a vegetable. I was too afraid to kill myself. You know, that was the bottom line. Um, I wanted so bad to be able to just end it, you know, because I was no relationships with my parents, you know, like unless I was asking them for money. When I got out of the hospital, my mom took off. Um, it was her last day of work before she moved. And uh, to a whole other state. So she's got a lot going on. And, uh, and she has to take off her last day of work to come to Philadelphia to pick her daughter up from the hospital because they wouldn't let me out unless it was in the care of my mother, you know, um, completely against medical advice, which I can't understand. Um, I, <laughs> that bad. And uh, so, yeah, so I spent a couple days in the, in the hospital because they thought I was, like, a danger to myself. And, um, and uh and I got out, and let's see, so I moved a couple times, I, um, what did I do? There's like, you know, how we have those ideas, where it's like, okay, well, if I do this, this will make it better. If I do this, this will make it better, you know, so I moved a couple times, I, I stopped hanging out with certain people, I hung out with other people more, um, you know, just all that stuff, I started just drinking alone. <laughs> That'll do it, you know, and, uh, and really, like, it was just the smart thing to do, um, because, you know, I would do things like, I would get, uh, I don't know if you guys ever did this, the pregame. I did the pregame all the time, whether there was a game on or not, you know. Uh, so, so I would do the pregame. We would go out to the club or wherever we were going. I only did this a handful of times. I was a, very much a drink-alone kind of girl. Um, but, like, my friends who, before they got to know me and ditched me, uh, they're like, yeah, we're going to the club. I was like, awesome. So, so we drink, you know, and, uh, and because I have that thing in me where once I start, like, I don't stop, I don't moderate, I don't have any sort of desire to do so, um, I, uh, I get absolutely wasted, and five minutes after being there, like, we went to this gay club, and I'm like, 
just falling on the dance floor, you know, we're not there five minutes and, uh, you know, just doing stupid stuff and somebody has to escort me home, you know. So I was like, okay, well, I don't really like hanging out with people anyway, so I'll just watch TV and drink, <laughs> you know, and that's what I did. And I remember, like, one time my roommate coming in from, from college and uh, she comes in, she, looks, she, she walks in, she actually went to class and uh, she walks in, I think this was after I was in the hospital, and uh, she looks at me, she sees the, uh, the, the, about this much left, it's about 10.30 in the morning, Maybe, no, it was like noon, um, she comes in, she sees uh, a fifth of rum, Cabana Boy Cherry Rum, um, and, uh, and there's like that much left in it, and I look at her, and I'm so excited, and clearly I'm drunk, and uh, she comes in, she's like, hey, how are you, you know, and uh, I'm like, Nicole, you'll never believe this. I can drink this, and I don't throw up, and I don't need to mix it with anything, you know? And I, I was so excited about that, you know? And uh, she's like, dude, uh, you think you might have a problem, you know? And um, I was like, no, what are you talking about, you know? Um, like, I just I did not see anything wrong with that at all. So, uh, so yeah, we have this utter like amazing ability, especially when we come to AA, and I see it all the time when I'm talking to new girls and stuff, and there's really anybody, where we have this amazing like way of just being so screwed and having no idea that we are, you know? And um, like I was just able to justify anything, you know, including drinking like that. It just makes sense. Everybody in college does that, you know? Um, they don't all end up in the hospital like I do, but that's all right. Sometimes things get out of control. Who cares, you know? Um, so, uh, so I moved a couple times, I moved, I'm like, okay, I, I ended up in North Carolina, um, and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back to school. The only way Temple University would let me back in after um, having a 1.23 GPA my, my first and only semester um, was, if, uh, was if I literally, my psychiatrist had to write a letter telling them that I was being treated and was taking my medication as directed. That was the only way they were letting me back into school. Um, so, uh, so I got me my letter, and I went up there with uh, my Depakote, you know, and uh, in my letter to let me back in, and, uh, and I was ready to go, man, you know. And um, so, uh, so I get back into school. I move into this place, um, not really close to school at all, but it was, like, one of the few people that was still talking to me in Philly. Uh, like, there was a six-bedroom house um, at this really terrible part of town, um, uh, Frankfurt in Allegheny. Um, if you've ever been to Philly, you chuckled just then. Um, because uh, it's like a really rough spot, you know? And uh, it still kind of is. And um, so I get there. I'm moving in. I'm completely oblivious, you know? And, um, and I'm moving in. It's all good. And literally the day that I'm moving in, some perfect stranger walks by and offers us wet, you know? As, as just, just, you know, just like that. I was like, this is great, you know? Like, this is what the neighbors are like here. I've moved to the right place, you know? Like, I'm finally in my fantasy land, you know, where I can just be who I am, and, uh, and, and everybody's just, like, comfortable being who they are, and we just offer each other drugs, you know? And, um, and it was great, man. I was so excited at that point. And I had this plan, though. I had this plan. Um, that I was going to go to school because I had just been messing up left and right and was getting the, the talk from friends and family, like, why can't you just pull it together? Pull it together, Emily, you know? And um, so at the beginning of that talk, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to school during the week. I'm going to party on the weekend, and that's how it's going to be because that's normal, you know? And, um, and that's what I'm going to do. So I had this, you know, this firm thing, and it would be like, okay, I'm going to write this paper, and then I'm going to drink. You know, and it was like, I'm going to drink to get started on this paper, you know, and it was like that slow thing. Um, but so, so yeah, so I started out with that plan, and little by little, like, what I don't know at this point is that if I start drinking Friday or Saturday night, I might not stop till Wednesday, you know? Like, I just don't have that control. I don't. Um, so if I have class Monday morning, guess who's not showing up if there's still booze left? You know, me. Um, because, again, like, I have that... <sighs> I have that thing in me, you know, or once I have one or two, I keep going, and I, I hit that sweet spot, and I keep going, you know, and, um, and that's just, that's the way that I drink um, every time. So, so yeah, so let's see, I run a, like, again, not even a month or so in the semester, I'm not going to class anymore, um, 
finally the day came when uh, I had ran out of money. I, I wasn't working. I, all I ate was um, there was a pizza shop across the street. I had one slice of pizza each day. Because, and not because, like, I didn't want to eat. It was literally because, well, I could spend this $5 on, you know, uh, a little, was it, like a pint of Mr. Boston vodka, or I could eat, you know, and that was the, the choice that I made every time. I didn't care. Um, so, so I was doing that. That's the way I was living. The people that I was living with were getting really tired um, of uh, having to hang out with me. Like, because I didn't even like me. I wouldn't even want to hang out with me. <laughs> like, why would any of you? Um, I was just so miserable, you know. I was that girl that just, like, cried every night, you know. And anybody that was stupid enough to listen, I told you, you know, that I was miserable. And I went on and on and on about it, you know. And, uh, and I was pathetic, you know, really. And, like, I, I was just so obsessed with feeling good and feeling okay. You know, that's, that's really, for me, like, that self-centeredness, man, that's how it played out. It's just like anybody I came in contact with, any substance I came in contact with, like anything that made me feel a little bit okay, um, I just I sucked the life out of you. Like you were saying, like, you know, going from being a taker to a giver has been a process, you know, um, because all I could think about was how to feel okay and what you could do to make that happen, you know. And uh, as soon as you stopped doing that, you were out, you know, as soon as you questioned my drinking. Um, as soon as you didn't call me every five minutes, you know, like, it was done. We, were, we had no business talking, and, um, unless you had what I wanted. So I'm coming home from school. I have no money. Um, nobody really likes talking to me. I have an empty bottle of vodka next to my bed, um, so dreadfully empty. I had done the last little bit of other stuff, um, before I went to school, um, because that was the only way I was showing up, and, uh. And I'm driving home, and I call, I call this girl who happened to be dating a guy in the program. Um, I didn't really know. That, apparently, like, we had met, but, like, I didn't really know that he was in the program. I didn't care. I didn't want anything to do with that. And, um, and I call her up, and I say, I don't plan on this. I'm just sobbing because, basically, I have no money, and I have no way of getting more of what I want. And uh, I'm just like, you know, Amanda, like, I can't stop drinking. I don't want to die, you know. And it just came out. And, uh. I had not been that level of honest with anybody probably ever. And, um, and she was like, okay, well, um, I'm going to a meeting tonight. Why don't you come to a meeting with me? I was like, <laughs> it was like amazing how quickly the ego rebuilds itself. Like I just tell this girl that like I want to die and I can't stop drinking and AA is just out of the question. That's a little, <laughs> like that's a little extreme, don't you think? You know, like go to an AA meeting. Sit up my meds, you know. Um, and, uh, so yeah. And uh, so so uh, she was like, and she said this, and uh, and thank God she did, um, because I probably wouldn't have gone. She was like, well, Emily, what do you have to lose? Oh, it stopped me dead in my tracks, you know. Any voices that were going on at the time, like any thoughts, any sort of ideas that I might have had to sort of be okay just like stopped um, because like I knew that I had nothing to lose you know I had again the connections with people were gone I wanted to die every morning that I woke up like you know I just wish that like ugh, I was jealous of the people that had the balls to kill themselves you know really I would hear about somebody killing themselves and I'd be like ugh, jealous you know like that's that's where I was at and um, so I had nothing to lose and so I go to this stupid AA meeting um, that I'm terrified to go to, and uh, <laughs> I remember, like, I met up with her, and she had me read. I was an English major at Temple University, by the way. She had me read uh, one of the stories out of the back of the big book when I first met up with her, and um, and I read it, and I, my comprehension was so just, it was non-existent because my brain was so foggy and so loud. Like, this is the first time that I'm sort of clear-headed and sober in a long time, you know, and I just couldn't, I couldn't read, you know, and I remember closing up the book after I read it, and uh, she was like, what do you think, did you relate, you know, and I was like, yeah, because I knew that's what she wanted me to say, you know, I was like, yeah, I really related a lot, she was young, I'm young, you know, and like, that was it, and, um, <laughs> and like, that's all I got out of it, and, uh, and I went, I went to this stupid meeting, um, completely out of my mind, like, she would try to introduce me to people, I'd be like, 
You know, like one of just frozen with fear, you know, and there were so many of you at meetings, so many of you, it seemed like, and like, you all wanted to talk to me and introduce yourselves, and like, who does that, you know, really? And, uh, and, uh, and I go to this meeting, and I see, I'm sitting there, and I'm gripping onto my chair, and my, my knuckles are white, you know, again, like, I'm, this is sobriety for me. Sobriety is not fun, you know, sobriety is just, a, I'm a ball of anxiety, you know, and um, I'm gripping onto the chair, and they do this thing which I hate, and I don't even make my new girls do it um, because I have such strong opinions about it. But uh, they do this thing, I'm sure they do it here, like where they give out 24-hour chips, you know? Do they do that? You guys know about that? They give out little 24-hour chips, and everybody's like, yeah, you know? And, like, you're dying of alcoholism. You are 24 hours away from a drink, and you are paraded in front of all these, like, really well people. Like, you're like, you know, and you're just, like, dragging your pathetic ass up there trying to look happy about it, you know? And you're just like, yay, thanks, guys. You know? Oh, God. So, like, I'm sitting there in the beginning of the meeting, and, like, and I get nudged to go, to go be one of these idiots that has to go up and get their 24-hour chip. And, um, and she's like, oh, I, get your t-. I was like, I can't. She was like, why not? I was like, because I don't have 24 hours yet. And she's like, well, no, it's like a desire if you just have a I'm like, I'm not going up there, you know? Like, that was like, I didn't speak more than those words the whole night. Like, do not make me go up there because I would run out of here and I'd never see you again, you know? Um, so I sat there, and I'm cloudy, and I'm, like, pissed that they tried to make me go up there. And, um, and like, I just, I mean, I was so, like, I, my head, uh, and, um, but the thing was, every now and then I would tune in to what people were sharing, you know, and um, and what was happening was they were describing themselves, they were describing how they thought, how they felt, how they drank, and uh, and I was relating to every single word, you know. I was like, wow, you know, and I never relate to somebody's story completely 100% on the outside, but I always relate to how you thought, felt, and drank, you know, always. Um, and... Uh, and that was amazing to me because I had people that I was talking to with degrees on the walls with, with decades of, of drug and alcohol counseling experience, and they had no freaking clue what it was like to be me. And here you are, like, talking about you and describing me, and that was blowing my mind because I didn't think anybody got it. I really didn't. Um, I, like, I was the unicorn walking in here. Like, my case is different, you know. And, uh, but there you were describing me, and uh, that was that was incredible, you know. And I knew, like in my gut, like uh, I belong here, you know. Like this this makes sense. And um, I got uh, the next day, I got tricked into going to my second meeting. I really did. I was like, they were like, oh, you got to come to this meeting tomorrow. I was like, oh, but I just went to one, you know, like yesterday. <laughs> and uh, they were like, well, what do you have going on? I'm like, a lot. You know, and uh, nothing, nothing going on. You know, I, I, I almost feel sorry for the people that come in here and they're like, oh, yeah, I got this, this, this. I have a piano lesson, you know, like they're like doing all these great things with their lives. They have these friends and they're like, I don't have time to go to a meeting. Like I, my schedule was clear, you know, um, nobody wanted to hang out with me. So, uh, so I get tricked into going to the second meeting and uh, like <laughs> I get there, and, um, and everybody was like, Emily, do you have a sponsor yet? Do you have a sponsor? Do you have a sponsor? Do you have a sponsor? Emily, do you have a sponsor? Um, hey, Emily, nice to meet you. Do you have a sponsor? You know? And it was just, like, constant, you know? So I was like, no, I don't even know what that is. Like, I'd never been to rehab. Like, I didn't – I'd never been to an AA meeting before. It was before the one the night before. And um, so I don't even know what a sponsor is. And I was like, well, what, what do I – who do I – I don't know, you know? And uh, I'm like, well, just ask somebody who has what you want. So – Sit at this table at this big book study, eyeing everybody up, and I zone in on one person, and I'll tell you why. I knew it had to be a girl, right? So uh, they're like, just find a woman who has what you want. Okay, she's got a she's got a really cool accent, and um, <laughs> she's from Australia, and that's hot, you know, it's hot in Australia. She's got this hot foreign accent, <laughs> like. She had, uh, she said, oh, she said HP for higher power instead of God, which I really appreciated, um, because God was like, "Hmm, that's, you guys are freaks. And, um, (laughs) and, uh, and, uh, she, uh, I thought she might be a lesbian, um, because she had, like, this, this really short hair and, uh, an accent, and, um, and so, (laughs) so, all lesbians have accents, right? And I was thinking, and I was thinking, like, you know, if she was gay and the whole sponsorship thing didn't work out, 
<laughs> we would fall in love. And uh, isn't that cute? And um, <laughs> so I found what I wanted. And uh, sweet, you know. That's, that's what you get when you leave a newcomer to her own devices. You know, those are my brilliant ideas one day sober. You know, that's why I don't even ask new girls, like, hey, what do you, what do you want? You know, because, like, I know what you want. You want a drink. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care what you want. Um, so why don't you just get in the car, you know? But, um, but anyway, so, so I go up to this woman who clearly has what I want uh, in every way. And, um, <laughs> and so I go up to her. I'm like staring at my shoes, you know, and I'm like, hey, will you sponsor me? She's like, no, you know. Um, Thank God, you know, because like the whole time, like we'd be reading the doctor's opinion, I'd just be like, I wonder if she likes me, you know. Um, So, but the only reason she said no was because she was going to Australia to visit her family for like the next month or something, and she, you know, obviously that wouldn't have worked out. So she pointed to this woman and uh, who had like four months over at the time, but had been through the steps who she sponsored, and um. And thank God I didn't know any better than that. You know, thank God I was like, well, wait, she doesn't have five years, you know? (laughs) Um, So, but, you know, and so I I was like, okay, well, you got my sponsor, you know? And uh, and she said, yes, of course, you know, I'd be happy to um, read the doctor's opinion, you know? I was like, okay, we exchanged numbers and... um, it was, it was very awesome because uh, these people that, that I met at this second meeting, they, uh, they didn't just sort of throw their numbers at me and, uh, and tell me to call them. Like, they sat down with me for a few hours at a coffee shop, and they, they told me their stories, and they explained to me what alcoholism was for them, and, uh, and they took the time, you know. Um, and, uh, and that was, like, that was incredible to me, you know. And I remember having a conversation with them and just being like, I, I get what you're saying. I, I relate to what you're saying, but, like, I am not an alcoholic. There's no way, you know. There's no way. I'm too young, you know, and uh, that's the only defense that I had. Um, you know, everything else, yeah, I can see how it looked like that, you know, but I, nah. And, uh, and they were like, okay, Emily, we've told you everything we have to tell you about alcoholism. So, uh, so I'll tell you what, since you're not convinced, why don't you go out and you try some controlled drinking? That's what it suggests to do. So why don't you go out to, you know, the bar, you know, where you drink? And I was like, I cut them off. I was like, no, I don't drink at a bar. And they're like, well, where do you drink? They're like, I was like, well, I drink it at home. And they're like, okay. So why don't you go home and, uh, you know, get together with your friends? I was like, no, I, I drink at home alone in my room. I don't drink. <laughs> and, uh, and they're like, okay. So your test, uh, then, if you're an alcoholic, is going to be when you go home alone in your room, uh, why don't you try having one or two, <laughs> you know? And, um, and something, uh, something pretty profound happened for me. Uh, as soon as they suggested that I do that fear shot through my spine and I knew that I never, ever would have one or two, nor did I ever have the desire to have one or two. Uh, I, just, I just didn't want it, you know? And uh, it made no sense to me. It made no sense to me to have one or two. Um, alcohol doesn't taste particularly good. I am a, I'm an effect drinker. Um, I drink because it makes me feel a little bit okay about being me, you know, and one or two isn't going to cut it. Um, so, uh, so that's, I mean, and it says, you know, that idea that we're like other people has to be smashed. That, that was my moment for me. It was, it was crushed. Um, I knew that I was an alcoholic, um, right then and there. So, uh, so I go home that night and, uh, I, I, I take a shower. I was not particularly into hygiene at the time. Um, there was really no point. I didn't leave my house a lot. I didn't have anybody to impress. Um, and uh, so I take the shower because I have a little bit of hope in my heart because not only did they tell me what alcoholism was, but they, they said that there was something, there's like a way out, you know. And I knew that they felt how I felt. I knew that they were once where, where I was currently at, you know. And uh, so... I was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe I might be okay, you know. And um, I wasn't completely believing it or into it, but I go home that night, I take a shower, and, uh, and I, I walk out and I hear, I hear this voice coming from down the hall that I knew really well because I knew that um, if I gave him money, he would give me stuff that made me feel okay. And, uh, like, again, like I had, like, one full day sober, 
and I ran in my room, <laughs> you know, and I locked the door, and I'm like, fuck, and I immediately start crying, because, like, it just gripped me immediately, you know, I knew what he had, and I knew, I knew what it could do for me, and, um, and, uh, and I called this guy, uh, who I met in AA, and I was like, hey, man, this is what's going on, you know, and he's like, okay, well, you just got a sponsor, right, I was like, yeah, I was like, so, you know, and he was like, well, why don't you call her, I was like, but, click, you know, and, uh, thank God he did, and, um, so, uh, so I called this lady that I just met, you know, like, bawling, crying hysterically, and, uh, and really, like, I called her to get permission, you know, like, I was going to call her up, and I was going to be like, listen, there's this guy, he's got what I like, you know, and I'm going to have one, and, uh, and then we're going to start this whole AA thing tomorrow, is that cool, you know, and, uh, because, like, I, I'm not going to be able to sleep, you know, like, this, this, I'm not okay, and, uh, she didn't give me permission, shocking, um, she, uh, Instead, she uh, she listened to me, and she was like, well, I mean, you can do what you do uh, or what, what you, what you want to do, but um, but here's what I do when I'm in your situation. And uh, and she suggested that we pray. <laughs> like, I literally, she was like, why don't we say a prayer together? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, almost clicking end on the phone. And um, I was like, yeah, no, no, I'm not going to pray with you. you Whack job, you know? <laughs> I need a Xanax, not a prayer. You know what I mean? Like, crazy. I thought you got it, you know? And, um, and uh, so I went on and on about that, again, trying to get permission. She was like, dude, you can do what you want. I, there, is, I, there is nothing I can do to stop you, you know, from, from doing what, what you may do tonight, you know? And, uh, and I was like, but you're my AA sponsor. You're supposed to be able to do something, you know? And uh, she was like, no, dude, what I have to offer you is prayer. That's it. You know, what do you have to lose? I was like, oh, that question, you know? And uh, so through tears and snot and not believing that it was going to work, um, I, uh, I said that I turned to page 63 with this lady, and, uh, and we, said, um, we said the third step prayer together. And um, – the other thing she said to convince me to do it, she was like, Emily, think of this prayer as like a spiritual Xanax, you know? And so, so she like started speaking my language a little bit, and I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense to me, okay, you know? Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that was like the only way she was going to get me to pray, and, uh, and I did, and, and, and I said it, and like I said, not believing, you know? I said this prayer with this lady, and uh, as soon as we were done, I felt better, you know? There was nothing crazy, no bright lights, none of that, like, I just felt a little bit better, and I knew that I was going to be okay that night, I don't know where that came from, it just happened, after I said this prayer, probably not a coincidence, you know, and, um, and I said, again, like, and this is weird, like I said, I was not into the prayer thing, like, I was like, can we say that again, I don't know, I feel better, and, um, and so we said this prayer again, and I just, I knew in my heart, I was like, I don't know about tomorrow, I don't know about the rest of my life, but I know that I'm okay today, it's nice, um, and so, uh, and I was, you know, and I have been ever since, um, and it was, it was those moments that I needed throughout my sobriety, um, by doing the steps, by working with a sponsor, um, that I needed, because I, I, like, I, I dragged in here the most pathetic, cold, empty person, you know, and, um, I needed a lot of charges to the heart in order to stay here, because, uh, I'm a pleasure junkie. You know, like if it wasn't fun, if something wasn't happening that was magical here and inside of me at the same time, like I wasn't going to stay, you know, I just wasn't. Um, you guys are great and all, <laughs> you know, but like if I'm miserable, I'm not staying here. And uh, and I wasn't, you know, and uh, thank God showed up. Uh, thank God God showed up, you know, because um, cause I wouldn't have stayed. I wouldn't. Um, and, and I didn't believe. I really didn't. Like I just – showed up, you know, and, uh, and I went through the steps, and I remember, you know, reading the doctor's opinion with my sponsor, and, uh, like, she would just, she, she took so much time with me, you know, and it's the same kind of time that I take with, with the girls that I, uh, that I sponsored today, you know, and it makes me feel so happy and whole, because for the longest time, man, I was sucking whatever I could out of life and out of all of you, you know, and now that I finally feel like I have something to contribute, um, you know, in a really special and unique way, like, what a profound gift that is, you know, and you guys gave me that, you know, and, um, 
Yeah. Really, AA, like I grew up in AA big time. I mean, I had, I had parents that tried to teach me a lot about life and how to live it and how to be a good person. And they did, man. God bless them. But, like, for whatever reason, I listened to you guys, you know. I listened to you guys when you said send a card to your grandma, you know. Um, call her up and see how her day is going, you know. How's your mom? Have you talked to her lately, you know. And, uh, and I needed that, man, because, like, just the way that I'm wired, I am just so, like, into myself, you know, and never think about you. I don't care about you in and of myself. I really don't. I don't know if that's cold or, or what, you know, but that's what I brought here, you know, and that's changed. I've, uh, I've been shown how to be a good daughter, how to be a good employee, how to be a good friend, how to be a good girlfriend, you know. I've been shown that stuff, um, and, I, and I needed to be, you know. I was the girl that, uh, that, it, that couldn't order a pizza over the phone without getting, like, severe anxiety, you know, and, uh, and now, like, I can get up in front of you guys, and, like, I really wasn't, I wasn't that nervous, you know, because, like, it's, like, whatever, like, it, you'll love me anyway, you know, like, or maybe you won't, I don't care, <laughs> you know, like, whatever, I'll probably not see you very often, you know, um, like, I'm just, I'm not so worried about impressing everybody and being so terrified about what you think about me, you know, I just, I'm comfortable today, and that's, that is a direct result of, uh, of doing these steps, you know, out of the book. It was just simple, you know. It was nice. Like, I didn't have to show up and think. I just had to show up, you know, and follow you guys around. I, um, I was shown how to do this stuff from very early on, and I feel really grateful for that. Like, I didn't hang out, you know. I didn't just hang out because, like, quite frankly, I was not interested in friends. <laughs> like, as lonely as I was, I didn't want to be your friend. I was invited to diners and things like that, and I was like, oh, I can. I have to study. And I'd go home and watch TV, you know, like, I was so terrified of you guys. I didn't want, to, I didn't want you guys to hang out with me or want to hang out with me, you know. Um, but, like, I have these amazing friends today, you know, and they're awesome. And, like, they're here tonight, some of them, you know. And um, I have connections with people, like, that I always used booze to get, and now I don't need that, you know. And, like, really, like, I, I've gotten so much awesome stuff on the outside. You know, I'm, I'm financially doing good. I have this great job. Um, you know, I graduated from school with uh, uh, magna cum laude honors. It's hard to bring that up from a 1.23 GPA, but I did it. Um, and, uh, and my parents were at my graduation. And, like, all that outside stuff is awesome. But just the fact that, like, I wake up in the morning and I don't wish that I had died in my sleep the night before, priceless. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's incredible, you know, and, and little things like that. Little things like if I have to read something at a meeting, I'm not shaking and sweating, you know. Like, I'm just, I'm okay. I'm okay. And um, and you guys gave that to me. Like, really, I, there's some times when, like, I think about the person that I brought to AA, and, and it's not the same person. It's not. I mean, I don't even know that girl. You know, I'd probably be really annoyed by that girl today, you know. Um but I don't know. I have a couple minutes. Uh, one cool thing that happened was, uh, like I said, I mean, this is all about relationships for me and uh, the fact that I'm comfortable without any sort of aid of any chemical of any kind. Um, and, uh, and one of the ways that that happened was I, I started making these, these amends, you know, and I started making these living amends and, um, and just sort of uh, just showing up and being in service. Thank God for service. Um, otherwise, I would have said no tonight if I didn't need to do it to save my life, you know. Um, but uh, so I made this amends to my grandma. Every, every amends that I've ever made, uh, it was always like, here's what I did, you know. And, uh, and they're always like, just keep doing what you're doing to make it right, you know. You're doing great. I'm so happy you're not miserable, <laughs> you know. Like, good job. And, uh and so I'm assuming that this is how it's going to go with my grandma. She was 92 years old at the time. And I was like, she's not going to understand what the hell I'm doing. She's going to be like, what are you talking about? And, uh, and I went and made amends with my grandma. And, uh, and I was like, here's what I did. I was just, I was terribly absent, you know. I, I was never like, I, I never, I didn't rob anybody, you know. Like I was just very much a fly under the radar. I was just so absent, you know. That was my MO. And uh, so I, I, you know told her what I had done, and I asked her, you know, what I could do to make it right. And I'm just expecting her to be like, I don't know, you're doing good, kiddo. Let's, you want some candy? You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's how I expect it to go. And, um, and instead, she sort of waits a second after. I'm like, what can I do to make it right? Is there anything else that you can think of? 
She's like, yeah, you were a rat, you know? She called me out, and I totally was. She was like, and here's what you can do to make it right, you know? And uh, she was like, you can call your dad more. You know, you can come and visit more. I was like, okay, <laughs> you know? And it was just this amazing moment. And now, like, I send her cards all the time. We talked on the phone, and, uh, and we have this amazing relationship. And you might be sitting there like, wow, I'm going to get sober so I can have a relationship with my grandma. Thanks, Em. You know, thanks for the hope. And, uh, <laughs> so, like, for me, that kind of stuff is freaking profound, you know. It's so profound because uh, I hid in my room, and I wanted nothing to do with you people, nothing to do with you because I was terrified of you, and I'm not, you know, I'm not anymore. And, um, and, man, if you're missing out on the relationships, if you're new and you're terrified, like, just show up. Show up. Ask somebody um, you think is attractive to be your sponsor. And, uh, you know, um, go through the dang steps, man. You know, I can't describe to you the experience that I've had and, and inspire you to do it. You know, you just have to experience it. Just, like, try the experiment. Like, really, what do you have to lose? Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.